Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the functionality of documenting in WebED. I'm going to start by selecting a patient on my tracker, as you can see that I have done here. This patient currently, as indicated by the No Document label, does not have a documentation started yet on the patient. To start a document, I could either click on this No Document label, which will take me into the documentation module, or I can select the document button at the top of the screen here. I'm going to go ahead and select the document button. When I select this button, it's going to bring up the templates that are available for me to choose from for this particular patient. This includes options for an ED adult template, an ED fast track template, an ED pediatric template, and an ED trauma template. You will notice that there's also a version of each of these templates that has a little asterisk. This is a structured version of the note, which will pull in discrete data elements into the note for you, such things as past medical history, medications, and allergies. This structured version will also have sections like the examination section, which will have quick pick fields to help make the documentation of the physical exam quicker you have the choice to pick between either a structured note noted by the asterisk or a more simplified version of the note which provides just the basic narrative box and assessment and plan areas for doing your documentation. If you do select the more simplified version of the template, you do have the ability still to pull in discrete data into your documentation. We will demonstrate this further into the video. For this patient, I'm going to select a simplified ED adult template. When I select this, the template is now brought up on the screen for me to fill out. The template is broken down into several different sections. The history of present illness, the procedure section, medical decision making, assessment and plan, as well as reassessments, a handover note, and discharge plan. The handover note section will populate when this patient is signed over to another physician and a handover note has been placed on the chart. Each of these sections are designed for information specific to that section. If, however, you do not go into a particular section, such as the procedure section or the medical decision section, these sections will not show up on the final output of the medical record. It is only when you go into these sections and select or enter information that this section will show up on the final output. At any time, you can take a look at what the final output of your chart will look like by selecting this little piece of paper that you see here beside the name of the template. If I click on this right now, you will see that the final output currently has just the narrative history of present illness area. No other information or other sections are on the output. The history of present illness has a blank narrative box. In this narrative box, you can go ahead and type or use the voice to dictate software to enter your note. You can also, within this narrative box, pull in any templates that you have built within the Nuance Dragon system. In this narrative box, I'm going to go ahead and put some information on the history of the presenting illness of this patient as well as my initial physical exam. Within the narrative box, you can also pull in any templates that you may have built in your voice-to-text Dragon software. I'm going to go ahead and start placing a note on this patient. This patient is presenting with chest pain 
and shortness of breath. I've opened up my voice to text software, so now I'm going to use that to put in the remainder of my history of present illness. The patient has been complaining of the chest pain for the past three days period, new paragraph. It is not associated with any cough, comma, or any hemoptysis period, new paragraph. The patient has also been experiencing a bit of pain in the right lower calf muscle period, new paragraph. The patient's past medical history is unremarkable, period, new paragraph. The patient is on no medications and has no allergies, period, new paragraph. On examination, the patient's vital signs are stable, period. The oxygen saturation is 100%, period, new paragraph. Respiratory examination is within normal limits, period, new paragraph. Cardiovascular exam is within normal limits, period, new paragraph. Now that I'm done entering the information that I want to in the history of present illness section, I'm going to move down to the medical decision making. When I click on the medical decision making, it's going to provide me a narrative box where I can go ahead and enter any free text information with regards to such things as the differential for this patient or any of my thought process of what might be going on with the patient. I'm also given some decision rules that I can use that might be applicable to this patient. For example, if I want to try using the PERC rule on this patient, I can go ahead and answer the questions associated with the PERC rule. When I answer these questions, it's going to calculate for me, in this case, the PERC score of 1. So in this particular case, I cannot use the PERC rule to rule out a pulmonary embolism. I am still concerned about a pulmonary embolism for this patient, so I'm going to go ahead and calculate their Wells risk. I'm going to select this score and answer the questions that it asks me here. I can see now that the Wells score is 4.5. This is a moderate risk score, so a PE is likely. However, doing a D-dimer would not be helpful in this patient, and I should go straight to doing a CT scan. What I'm going to do under the narrative box here is put in my differential to rule out, rule out a pulmonary embolism and rule out acute coronary syndrome. I'm now going to add the two differentials that I have into my problem list. I'm going to enter chest pain as the main active problem for this patient. By doing so, it now lists chest pain as one of my problems that I'm following for this patient. Under the plan, I'm going to list that I'm going to rule out a PE by sending the patient for a CT scan of the chest. And I'm going to rule out ACS by ordering and EKG and serial troponins. Now that I'm done entering information at this time for the patient, I can go ahead and hit the save button at the top right hand side of the screen. The note will auto save in the background and you can see here when the last saving was done on the document. I'm going to go ahead and click save and it's now going to bring me back out to my tracker. You will now see that on this patient, I have a draft note. When I'm ready to go put more information into my documentation on the patient, such as reassessments, I can click on the draft note label here, and it'll bring me into the documentation on the patient. In this case, I want to go into the assessment and plan area so I can do a reassessment of the patient. Under the reassessment column, I'm going to enter that the patient is no longer, no longer having any chest pain and that the CT scan was negative for a PE. My plan right now is to await the repeat troponin. And at the time of this reassessment, I can click the clock to enter the time that the reassessment was done.
You can now see when I click on the little piece of paper beside the ED adult template name, you can get a view of what the output of this note is starting to look like. Here with my history of present illness and physical exam, the medical decision making that was done, as well as the assessment and plan and reassessments. I'm going to go ahead and save this note and go back to my tracker. I'm going to go ahead now and document on another patient. The patient that I have selected here currently has no document started. I'm going to click on that label to bring me into the documentation module. Here I'm going to be provided with a list of templates to choose from. This is a trauma patient, so I'm going to select the trauma template. However, I'm going to pick this time the structured data trauma template, which is going to pull in discrete data from the patient's chart into my note for me. When I select this chart, you will see now that the document has a past medical family and social history section, as well as a medication and allergy section. When I scroll down to the past medical family and social history section, the past medical family and social history has now populated within my document for me. This information is coming from the section over here in the reference panel under the past medical family and social history module. I can go ahead and enter more items into the medical history by selecting this button here if I wanted to. You will also see at the bottom here under medications and allergies that the system has brought into my documentation the patient's home medications as well as any allergies that they have listed on file. The trauma template has sections such as the primary and secondary survey. I can go ahead and put in a narrative note as I have done in the previous example and I can go into the discrete data sections such as the primary and secondary survey to provide more information on the exam of the patient. If I click the primary survey, it provides me the different categories that I can go in and answer some of these questions. Similarly, if I want to go into the procedure section, if I had to put in a chest tube, I could click the procedure section. I could select chest tube and I put a chest tube in on the right side. I use betadine, lidocaine. I made an incision with a 10 blade. I sutured it to the skin. There was some blood drainage, a small amount. I did a post-procedure x-ray. Patient tolerated it well, and there was no complications. When I'm done entering information into my chart, I have the option once again to save it or to sign it. I'm going to keep this in a draft state so that I can go back to it later to enter more information. So I'm going to go ahead and just save it. I'm going to go ahead now in this next example and place a document on the patient I have highlighted here on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and hit the document button. It's going to bring up the list of templates that I can choose from. This is a fast track patient, so I'm going to pick the fast track template. In this example, I'm going to do my entire note for this patient all within the narrative box. I'm not going to use the document templates that you see down in this section here. I'm going to use my voice to text software to enter my note. This 22-year-old female is presenting with a sore throat for the past three days period. The sore throat is associated with a dry cough, comma, and some intermittent fever and chills period. New paragraph. Her past medical history is unremarkable, comma, and she's on no medications, period. New paragraph. On examination, her vital signs are stable, period. She's afebrile, period, and her oxygen saturations are 100%, period. New paragraph. Her pharynx is red, comma, with tonsillar exudate bilaterally, period. New paragraph. She has some tender anterior adenopathy period. New paragraph. Respiratory examination is within normal limits period. 
new paragraph. Impression and plan, colon, acute pharyngitis, period. New paragraph. A throat swab has been taken, period. Tylenol, one gram, Q6H, PRN. New paragraph. The patient's been advised to follow up with any increasing symptoms, comma, problems swallowing, comma, or any concerns, period. Now that I've done my note, I'm going to go and save it. But this time, I'm done with the note, and I'm going to sign it at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the Sign button. When I hit the Sign button, it's going to ask me a couple questions. One is, is there any signers that need to be on this document? The only time this field would be used is if you have a mid-level provider working with you, such as a nurse practitioner, a medical student, or a resident, that you want them to use this field so as that you can co-sign off their note. Otherwise, this section for signers would not be used. The Copies to field allows me to send copies of my emergency record to other providers. It will list me as one of the providers because I have been taking care of this patient. If the patient had a family physician listed in the chart, that family physician would be listed here as well for you to select. You can, however, also look up in the catalog any other physician that you would like this to be copied to. For example, if I want this to be copied to Dr. Smith, I would type in his name and it would add him to the field to have this copied to him. When I'm done, I hit the sign button and enter my PIN number. I've now signed off and completed this document. You will now see on the tracker that the field has now changed to signed to show me that I have a signed document on this patient.